unidentifiable flying object. The UFO continues to be a mystery. Wasn't alone in space. Sightings of UFOs. Something out there. Close enough to be observed. What could it be? It could only be one thing. A UFO. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode, Jesus, what is this, 96 of UFO No, your break from the propaganda, the bad news, the political nonsense, because it's all running rampant, ruining this world, Uh, so we're going to get away from it, we're going to have fun talking about the abduction of Susan, and I know that's super vague, Susan, who the fuck is she, we're going to get into it, that's what we're going to do, thank you for joining the show. We appreciate you. We love you. We're in the stratosphere, cruising about, I don't know, 94,000 feet. That's about what it feels like. And it's clear skies, baby. If you like the show, be sure to share this episode. Give us a really nice review uh, everywhere you can. Apple, uh, Apple uh, iTunes, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. You can review all those places. And I believe you can, we're on Audible. You can review us on Audible too. Um, Hit that subscribe button if you're watching on Rumble, if you're watching on YouTube. So we're there also... It all really helps to get the podcast out there as well as sharing. So make sure and do that. Also, you can go check out that link in the show notes, uh, Portal to All Things UFO Know, and get yourself some sweet merch. And don't forget, you can also donate at patreon.com slash UFO Know Podcast, where you get no ads, all my loyalty, and uh, a bonus episode each and every single week and access to the Discord uh, server that we will chat live with you on those bonus episodes. Super awesome, super fun, the Tinfoil Militia. We're doing this with me today for, I believe, several consecutive times. It is, uh, it's Nate. What's going on, dude? How are you? Hey, what's going on, gay? How are you, my friend? That's going on, buddy. I'm doing good. Good, good, good to have you on, man. I'm glad to have you here, my friend. We're gonna we're gonna cruise through the cosmos today and explore Susan. Oh, that <laughs> sounds fascinating. Your body is Wonderland. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be great. So, uh, if you're wondering who the hell is Susan, is um, there is a great account. Um, uh, of Susan, quotation marks, Susan from Pembrokeshire, um, which is uh, super British, obviously, as you can tell from the name. Um, obviously. But, yeah, but her tale is incredibly frightening. I mean, really, if, if we're, if we're going to look at this, which we are, we're going we're gonna to look at it. Um, it's a hardcore story. It's a hardcore story. Now, it involves... You know, this this theory of uh, alien harvesting humans, you know, body parts, all kinds of crazy shit in, in a very gruesome fashion. So we're going to get very graphic on this episode. It's going to be phenomenal. Uh, you're going to yeah. love it. Hope you had a light lunch. But it is really terrifying if we think about the potential for this to have actually happened, if this actually happened to this woman, Susan. It is some scary shit to think about this. And then you add in, you know, the idea that we've talked about alien abductions and invisibility being involved, that they could be happening anywhere at any time. That's terrifying. And then to think that it could be going down in this way. So, you know, the idea of getting abducted is really a gamble. Are you going to are you going to get an enlightened experience with an advanced civilization that that is uh you know, all about helping humans and giving you this message of like, do away with nukes and grow some trees. Or are you, are you going to get the type that, you know, want to cut your nuts off? So this, that's a hard choice. It, it's right. <laughs> <laughs> Nate's one of those guys. Nate's one of those guys. Oh, getting my nuts cut off. That could be fun. Um, <laughs> but it, it really, if there's any truth to this, um, it makes me, you know, I, I've always said for a long time, I want to be abducted. And, and after re- uh, looking over this story, I'm going, I don't know. I don't yeah. know, man. 
even I draw a line at that point, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, like this would be a no go for me, but yep. So now that we've built up the suspense of just how bad this is, let's get into it. So according to Susan, she witnessed and experienced experimentation and unimaginable pain and terror at the hands of a race who are not human. Those are her words. Um, but she also says it's not just her. She claims that there's a lot of other women that this is happening to and they that she was with them, a lot of other women. I mean, we're talking not just a, a dozen, not two dozen. It seems like from her accounts, she's talking about thousands at a time. Like a cattle. Like cattle. Yeah, yeah. like a like an absolute like factory a- farming style mm-hmm. human harvesting. Uh, which is is scary. And look, I factory farming is deplorable. And so if if the one thing that I saw in this that made me wonder of, of its validity was it certainly seemed like it could be coming from PETA. You know, like this is a hundred percent what happens in factory farming. And so I thought right away, I was like I wonder if she's a member of PETA and she's like, you know, she's like, this is what a cow goes through. And I'm going to say I'm abducted because this is what happens, Um, which obviously in the terms of a human, it's horrible. But even if you you'd have to be not have a soul, if you could uh, have something horrible happen um, to cattle and be okay with it. So in the alien's defense, have we even offered them an impossible human? (laughs) An impossible human burger? (laughs) An impossible human burger? Like maybe? We've never given them the alternative and that's on us. That's on us. us. We didn't Mm -hmm. do enough. Um, (laughs) She she claims that uh, there was memory loss. There was weird rashes on top of crazy dreams. And that's just uh, the tip of the iceberg. So, um, we're going to go from the beginning accounts to the worst, uh, to the last, which is the worst. Um, but let's start with this. So one of the first times happened in November, 2009, she was staying with three of her friends at their, their parents. So that her friend's parents farmhouse in the country. So the story goes that Susan left the group to go to the bathroom. Why does this always happen? By the way, why does it always happen? It's, it's like the whole scary movie thing. You've ever seen the movie scream? Yeah. When they're when they're all like, oh, here's the rules and uh, you know, don't leave it never say I'll be right back when you leave a room and the guy's like, I'll be right back. Um <laughs> so it's like this, you know, it's like never say I gotta go to the never leave a group yeah. to go to the bathroom. Um and, and in all these tales, you know, every time I'm somewhere, women go to the bathroom by themselves or uh together. In groups. In groups. Yeah. So so what is so happening here? It's what is happening? Be fishy when they leave the flock to go by themselves. Like that <laughs> already eliminates all credibility. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it really makes me wonder. It makes me wonder. So either way, she goes to the bathroom by herself after a short time, she hears their dog, Lenny, barking like someone had pulled up to the house and then all the lights go off in the bathroom. But then the entire bathroom gets lit up by light coming from the uh, a skylight that was in the ceiling. So the lights flooded, the bathroom's flooded with light. And at first, she thought maybe it was a helicopter, you know, that it shined a light over the top of the uh, bathroom. But she couldn't understand why there's no sound. She couldn't hear anything. All she could hear was her friends talking and Lenny barking. So all of a sudden, as quickly as it came on, lights go out. And then the bathroom lights come back on. Um, so even more reason to think it was some kind of an aircraft because it would seem as though it was passing over in a way. That's at least what I would think. Yeah. Uh, but I would also be weirded out thinking how close this aircraft would be if it was shining a light into the bathroom skylight. You know, so that that was the one thing I thought, well, I certainly wouldn't be like thinking that was normal of an aircraft to be flying over and the light just happened to flood my whole bathroom. You know, that'd be mm-hmm. weird. But anyways, after she comes out of the bathroom, she goes out uh, downstairs, tells her friends, uh, or I'm sorry, she sees her friends and her friends tell her, what took you so long? She's like, what do you mean? And they go, you've been in there for like 15 minutes. And to her, it was only a few minutes, maybe five minutes at most. Uh, so she didn't think much of it, let it go. Um, but several hours later, 
Everyone's turning in for the night. Uh, Susan decides she's going to take the dog, Lenny, with her out to the guest house, which is separated from the farmhouse, um, and slept out there. Uh, around 3.18 a.m., she wakes up. Suddenly, she's feeling like someone or something is in the room. She could hear Lenny breathing, so she knew it wasn't him. Uh, but uh, just as she goes to sit up in bed to see what's going on, the entire room gets lit up just like the way the bathroom did and causing her to squint at the brightness because I don't know if you've ever had uh, the light turned on in a in a bedroom after you've been sleeping. I mean, it's like it's like a flashbang went off. It's like a flashbang went off. It's horrible. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's squinting at the brightness, wasn't sure where the light was coming from, if it was coming from this figure or if it was something else, and then she gets a sharp pain in her head. Lenny starts barking at this something in the room, and... When she looks in the direction that he was barking, she could see a thin black figure staring back at her. So Lenny, to confirm that she was actually seeing something, Lenny launches himself at whatever's in the room. And another flash of light comes from this being, and Lenny lets out a howl of pain. Oh, no. And goes still. No. I know. Not the Take dog. Take Susan, not the dog. Not the dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take the girl. Leave the dog. He's uh, just being a good boy. That's all. <laughs> damn it. I know. I know. These always make me sad when when uh, when animals get it. Mm-hmm. Uh, plus, he's defending this woman. You know, just Jesus. Another flash, and the dog disappears altogether. Completely disappears. Then a third flash comes. And this black featureless face appears inches from her face. And then all of a sudden, she wakes up and she's back in bed and everything's normal. What about the dog? The dog, well, I'm going to get to that. So she looks at the clock, looks at the clock. Now it's 7.44 a.m., okay? So it's Mm -hmm. four something hours later. Her entire body's aching like she's suffering from a severe hangover. So she's confused. She's disoriented. She goes to the bathroom and starts to remember bits and pieces, remembers that Lenny's gone. So she kept telling herself it must have been a dream, hoping that her friends just, you know, let Lenny out or something. So she runs to the main house, frantically asking her friends about Lenny, but they didn't, they hadn't seen him. Everyone immediately goes out looking for him. Can't find him anywhere. She's devastated. No one believes her story, which honestly, I got to say, I wouldn't either. You know, I mean, look, you know, maybe I'm closed minded, but. You know, it's a it's it's something you wouldn't you'd be like, what? (laughs) What? The dog jumped at this weird figure in your room and then you just wake up and it'd be hard to believe, you know, and if your dog was missing, it'd be hard to think that maybe she wasn't making up some crazy story to to uh, cover up why the dog went missing. Like, maybe she just left the door open. You know what I mean? Path, I pathological know, liar sure. type stuff. But at the same time, you would think that due to previous history with her, they would know if she was a liar or not. So if something like this really did happen, then if, if I knew, like, let's say you told me this. I'd have zero reason to to discredit you because you've never lied to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what I mean. It's like it, it, previous history. But either way, these people don't believe her. Yeah. Um. So they leave. They left her alone the rest of the time at this farmhouse. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but I mean, at this, like, I I was kind of think I really thought about this because I'm thinking like at first I'm like, wow, what a bunch of dicks. But then I also thought, like, you know what, though? If I had a peaceful night's sleep, literally saw nothing, heard nothing, everything's fine. You wake up, everybody's having breakfast. You know, it's it's a good morning. And 
the lady that slept in the guest house comes running in claiming that she saw some weird creature that the dog jumped at, disappeared with a flash of light, and now nobody can find him. I, I, I'd feel like my day was ruined. I guess that depends on how well you know the person, the credibility. Like exactly. you said, if I made that kind of thing, I'd be more believable to you. Yeah, I'd be really freaked out by the fact that you were so adamant about it. I'd be like, what well, this is, why is he so absolutely adamant about this? Like well, this? I lost my dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, anyways, she ends up, um, at some point going back home, I'm not sure how many days it was that she was there by herself, but uh, she ends up getting really intensely ill several days after this uh, situation. It, she got a bunch of nosebleeds, intense pain right behind her eye. Um, and she was so shaken by it all that she temporarily moved in with her aunt because she was she was worried about being by herself, which I honestly I would do too. Yeah. Uh, but things didn't stop. So one night while she's out with her then boyfriend, Adrian, they're sitting in their car after having gotten some fast food, uh, bad nutritional uh, options there, people. But um, I don't know why I said that. I don't give a fuck if you bought Wendy's or not. Anyways, they're uh, sitting in their car eating fast food, looking out at the water, which was like uh, uh, a river that came in from an ocean. So like a bay kind of. Mm -hmm. um, watching the lights, watching the boats. And they see a bright orange light hovering over the water heading towards them. Adrian tries to start the car, but it won't start. So the object starts coming towards them, gets directly in front of them. Susan says she could hear some popping in the air as it hovered. So that uh, uh, right away made me think uh, combustion engine. Mm -hmm. You know, not like what we normally hear about, which is anti-gravity, silent, zero, you know, not even heat. Not even any kind of uh, wind or anything from propellers and nothing, virtually nothing. So right away I'm going, whoa, that's really, uh, that's kind of odd. So I'm thinking drone, really shitty drone if it's popping. Clearly it needs uh, uh, a tune-up. But as it's popping in the air and hovering, everything, as she says, is bathed in an orange fiery glow. And she could feel energy pulsing off of this craft. So right away, I'm thinking not advanced civilization, not advanced aliens. I'm thinking hinky craft. Hinky, you know, human craft. I don't know. Then it shoots off into the distance. And as soon as it's gone, the car stops, uh, starts up. Of course, that's really common in a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff. Is, uh, Let's which, make some models. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, think about like uh, an EMP, right? Or some kind of device that can, uh, I don't know. I mean, would an EMP affect the ability to start a car? I'm really dumb. Oh, uh, yeah, it would. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. So, uh, and especially nowadays, like if you've got a Tesla, you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> If yeah. somebody has too much static in their in their body and they get in your car, you're fucked. Just uh, rub your feet together real close on the on the carpet. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So we'll it shoots off. Football. Car starts up as soon as it disappears. They quickly drive to a nearby pub where Adrian calls friends, telling them to meet up where they saw this object because he's sure it's going to happen again, and he's excited about it. Susan is not excited. <laughs> She's concerned she's concerned that there's a connection between this object and the weird experience she had at the farmhouse and so she's kind of freaked out uh nope. she she tells adrian that she wants to go home now this blew my mind okay Kay. instead of taking her home nate he drives her to a nearby bus stops and kick kicks her out what dude no shit According to her, Adrian <laughs> decides he wants to go see this craft and kicks her out of the car at a bus stop, leaving her alone. 
that that blew my mind is not dead what do you know (laughs) blew my mind i was like wow what a dick move that is hard i could not that's crazy that's super harsh so i would have just drove her back to the spot been like oh sorry you know like i guess we're here now like why kick her out jesus Anyways, also, the other thing is maybe this woman is a real man hater. You know, maybe she's really anti-dude. And so she's like this whole story is designed to really, you know, make uh, make her seem like a victim of masculinity. You know what I mean? Save but the cows, hate the men. That's right. Yes. She's a feminist PETA person. Oh, no. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Anyways, I just, I'm always thinking about, I'm always trying to think like, is there a hidden agenda here? You know? So anyways, right away, I'm like, okay, she hates dudes. Uh, She doesn't like factory farming. Got it. Okay. (laughs) Anyways. um, So a short time later, a bus shows up. She gets on and she, as soon as she sits down, her nose starts uh, bleeding. So she goes to her, gets to her aunt's house, takes a shower feels super shitty so she decides best thing to do is just go to bed that night she has a really weird and twisted nightmare so in her dream she's walking down a country lane next to a tall man again dudes with a featureless face a bright light shows up behind him And fear kind of takes her over. When she looks at the bright light, the bright, the the light flashes and blinds her. And all of a sudden, her surroundings change. Now she's on a street in a town called Haverford West. And there were Christmas decorations everywhere. And it's snowing. Now, I don't know what time of year. The, The article didn't really say what time of year it was. Um, For some people, it doesn't matter. That's true. Yeah. it's a good point. Uh, Either way. Anyways, it's Christmas decorations everywhere, and it's snowing. She's totally confused. She sees a row of pubs ahead and and goes ahead and goes inside. It's all decorated up um, as well with Christmas music playing and everything. The first person she sees at the bar is her grandmother, who had died several years back from cancer, sitting at the bar. So when she goes up to talk to her, she before getting a word out, her grandma is communicating with her telepathically. And her, and her grandmother tells her to be brave. She needs to help her friends. And then she reaches out and grabs Susan's arm. The music stops. Christmas lights go out. And all of a sudden... Susan becomes aware of several figures watching them from the shadows. You know the first thing that went through my mind when I heard this? The worst Christmas ever. (laughs) Yeah. Also, (laughs) a holodeck. Oh, that would be amazing to have one of those. Wouldn't it? But think about that. That would make sense. Think about a holodeck, and then there's a bunch of people that she's able to see them. They don't think that she sees them maybe or something like that. But either way, after this, after she spots these uh, beings, a bright flash of light and she feels a sudden pain, same, uh, similar to before, something sticking into the back of her head. Again, that's like Matrix style, uh, holo, holo, uh, holodeck kind of thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she feels paralyzed all of a sudden, and the only sound she could hear was her own screams. And then all of a sudden, she's sitting in a theater facing a huge screen, and she could sense someone was sitting behind her, but she, was, she couldn't turn around. She was still paralyzed. Imagine that. Imagine knowing there's somebody behind you, but you can't look. That'd be scary. So then yeah. on the screen... Images of her hometown start showing up like a promotional video showing all the best parts of this town, Pembrokeshire. 
So like going around, you know, probably like elevator music style, you know, showing all the, the, the kids playing in parks and whatnot. Then all of a sudden the images change to a nature scene of a large spider being swarmed and overtaken by ants. Like in a really graphic way is how she describes it. It's like it was a graphic nature-like scene of these ants eating the like spider. Like and Willy Wonka where they're all going down the nightmare. <laughs> yeah, tunnel. exactly. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> that was the weirdest thing, dude. That was the weird. That scared a ton of kids back then. Yeah, that wasn't even planned. Really? Well, I mean, it was planned, but the people that were the extra actors other than Gene Wilder were unaware that that was going to happen. No shit. That's so awesome. That's the way to get natural reactions, dude. Yeah. That's the way. Same thing with this little tumble at the front gate. Oh, yeah, I remember that, yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, he ad-libbed that. Sorry for the sidetrack. No, that's great. I love it. That's one of my favorite movies. Uh, The Gene Wilder one. All the rest of them can suck a dick, but um, the Gene Wilder one is the best. He's the best, yeah. Yeah. The books are great. I don't know if anybody's ever read the books, but the books are phenomenal. Uh, So she's in this theater, can't turn around. She's paralyzed. She knows somebody's behind her. Images change to a spider being eaten by ants. She wants to look away, but she can't. So after a little time, she hears her grandmother's voice in her head. And she doesn't say what it says. She just hears her hears her in her head. Another flash of light causing her head to throb with pain. Next thing she knows, she's in her bed. So she gets up to drink some water. Her throat's super dry. Uh, when she opens her bedroom door, though, this faceless figure is standing right in front of her. It reaches out, touches her on the side of the head, and then poof. She wakes up back in her bed again. Dude, that's like a dream in a dream scenario. That's scary as hell. Like the nightmare you can't wake up from. Mm -hmm. So the whole day, she's sick. The whole day. She sleeps for 12 hours, still feels completely drained. Like, just absolute dog shit. That night, needing a lot of sleep, she takes two sleeping pills. This time, when she goes to bed, she leaves the door open. And she can see her aunt's room across from her. So, that way, you know, she's got an escape plan. So, when she falls asleep, she finds herself back in the same dream. But this time, mind you, she's in the pub, okay? But this time... With the Christmas decorations and all that shit. But this time, instead of finding her grandmother, it's a younger version of herself. That's super creepy. And like her grandmother the night before, her younger self tells her telepathically she has done well. And that her I friend... I swinging. <laughs> Would you? Well, yeah, if I was going through all the crap she is, yeah. You'd beat the shit out of your younger self. Yeah, she touches me, then I'm going <laughs> to... It's know, on. She puts hands black. on me, it's on. If little Nate yeah. puts hands on me, I'm going to beat that motherfucker up. What if you give him head trauma and you wake up with head trauma? Yeah, he's better off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. He'll fake me later. There you go. That's <laughs> it. You're right. You're right. You'll. You'll. Th- I'll thank me later. <laughs> So, uh, says that her friends are very grateful for her help. So in this time, so her grandmother tells her her friends need her help. Now her younger self tells her she did good. Her, her friends are grateful for the help. I, you know, what did she do? How did she help them? Then the usual flash, she's back on her bed again, but this time she couldn't move. She could only move her eyes. She can see into her aunt's room and she sees this mysterious faceless figure along with some kind of weird monstrous jellyfish hovering over her. And a long tentacle comes out of this jellyfish, slithers all over her aunt's face and goes up her nose. Then Susan sees another tentacle stretch out towards her aunt's cat 
that's on the bed and goes into its mouth. And this poor Ooh. kitty, this poor kitty is lifted into the air on the end of this tentacle, its body totally limp. Susan's aunt wakes up during this, sees what's happening, starts screaming. And then all of a sudden, Susan wakes up in her bed again and it's daylight. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck, dude? That's crazy. <laughs> that, absolutely these, nuts. These guys really have a problem with animals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no shit, man. These poor animals. So she's convinced it's not a dream. She immediately looks towards her aunt's room, but her aunt's not there. Then she hears her aunt vomiting in the bathroom. So she goes in the bathroom. Susan goes in the bathroom, asks if she's okay. <laughs> and I'm like, no, she's, she's been raped in the face day. by a squid. Like, of course yeah. she's not okay. Jesus. So her aunt gives her a thumbs up. But when Susan looks in the toilet, it's completely splattered with blood. So her aunt tells her, oh, I must have caught a bug from work and tells her, just leave me alone, leave me alone. I don't want you to catch this. So so Susan leaves the bathroom. Dude, it, have you ever seen the movie um, Dream Catcher? Mm-hmm. Dude, that's kind of what it reminds me of. Mr. Gay. <laughs> Mr. Gay, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Dude, that's uh, what a weird movie. That was a weird movie. It's good, but it's very good. I read the weird. book Stephen King. I love Stephen King, and I read the book. Great book. The movie, like all Stephen King movies or the movies that have been done over about his books, they they don't ever do it right. Nope. You know, it's like The Shining, dude. That they did not do that movie right, even though it's a great classic film. The book is so much better. So much better. But anyways. Susan goes downstairs and finds uh, the cat on one of the chairs asleep. But she claims, she says, it didn't look himself. So Mr. Meowsers doesn't look himself. So she goes to a doctor later that day to get some anti-anxiety pills and sleeping pills because clearly she's having issues. By the time she gets home, her aunt was downstairs, still looking bad, still looking shitty, but she's telling Susan she feels better. The cat hasn't eaten all day, and so Susan's worried about him. That night, going to sleep, Susan finds herself in the dream again. This time, in the bar, instead of her grandmother... Instead of her younger self, it's her friend, Cian. It's the it's the uh, owner of the dog, Lenny. So just like before, Cian spoke to Susan telepathically and tells her that Lenny was with her friends and that it's all her fault that he went missing. And she had to help her these friends and that she had to be brave. Like, can you imagine the guilt trip? She's already beaten herself up over it. Jesus. So then, like like before, the music stops, the usual flash, finds herself again in the theater, showing her town, Pembrokeshire, with various locations, showing people on the streets, going about their business. Then the skies go dark. It shows a boat on the water. The same uh, river area that her and Adrian were looking at when they were parked watching the uh, watching the strange object, but mm -hmm. the, this time the water's all choppy and there's fire everywhere. In fact, the fire itself is on fire. I'm sorry, the, the fire is on fire. The water, <laughs> the water itself is on fire, and was rushing down. So imagine like a flood. The water's rushing over everything, flooding over everything, but it's fire. That's crazy. Yeah. So the fiery water is sweeping over everything. People are incinerated. Buildings are crumbled. 
oil tanker tips over and explodes. The whole screen goes black. When it comes back on, it just shows the aftermath. Burnt bodies everywhere. Survivors running around looking for dead loved ones. And she couldn't shake the feeling that she was seeing a vision of the future. Then, a young girl walks up to her, severely burnt face, looks into the camera. Mind you, she's looking at this theater, this screen, right? Looks into the camera, directly at Susan, urging her to run. Then a flash of light, and Susan wakes up in her room again. I'm telling you, by this point, I would have gone full bat shit crazy. Yeah. Full bat shit crazy. I would have lost touch. I wouldn't know what was real and what wasn't real. I mean, I'm already teetering <laughs> on what reality is and isn't. I, I'd totally lose my shit. My cheese would have slid off its cracker by this point. A hundred percent. Yeah. My God, I couldn't imagine having to live through all this and then having to go to work the next day. Yeah. Yeah, that definitely doesn't talk about her work, but yeah, I'm not, not sure what she does. Hopefully, it's something that... Uh, work is, from home, hopefully. Yeah, maybe, or grounded <laughs> in reality in some way. Yeah. So she quickly goes downstairs, discovers her aunt standing in the living room with her dead cat limply in her arms. And for the next three nights, she experiences the same type of activity. These crazy, weird dreams showing her hometown, showing the random various catastrophes that happen. But then things settle down a little bit. And, uh, but Susan's aunt continues to feel like shit. Doctors tell her it's the flu, but her aunt's not convinced. So instead, her aunt tells her, I can't handle whatever this is, and she blames Susan. So she tells Susan, you got to go. Tells her you got to move out. Yeah, go back no to your... More, uh, no more alien tentacle crap. <laughs> yeah, no go. shit. No more getting raped in the face by aliens, okay? Yeah, yeah I'm good with that. You I'm... take your shit and leave. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. So she tells her she got to go out, go back to your parents, whatever, just you got to go. So she does. She goes back to her parents. Things settle down for several months. She goes, several months, no problems. She's even starting to kind of move past this a little bit, starting to less anxiety, you know, starting to relax a little bit. But I don't even know how you move past that. Me neither. I'd be terrified to go to sleep. Like this woman's got the will of Batman. (laughs) No (laughs) shit, man. I'd be I'd be like I'd be terrified like Freddy Krueger style to Mm -hmm. go to sleep. You know, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. So she starts having strange dreams again, progressively getting weirder, not to the same extent, but they're weird. In one of the dreams, in, in fact, in all the dreams, she's walking naked in a field with several other women she doesn't know. And she just keeps having these weird dreams in these fields with these women. Along with the dreams, though, she starts having these weird encounters while driving to and from. She Oh, she's in university. She's going to school is what she's doing. Uh, she starts having these weird encounters while driving to school, including seeing an orange object on several occasions, like, uh, like it was following her or tracking her. So her anxiety starts getting higher. On top of all this, Uh, Her aunt ends up getting admitted to the hospital for extremely advanced cancer and passes away a week later. Jesus. After that, Susan decides she's going to find a secluded place to live out her life. She blames herself for Lenny. She blames herself for her aunt, her aunt's cat. Now she's worried What kind of danger is she going to bring into her parents' home if she stays? Yeah, that's the logical thought I was thinking. Yep. So she gets out, gets a little flat on her own. So uh, in British terms, that's a little studio apartment, I believe. And But the, the strange dreams continue. She sees foxes and owls in these dreams. She wonders if they're symbolic. 
She's always in fields. She's always naked with other women. Slut. <laughs> right? One night, she wakes up in the street, still wearing her pajamas that she wore to bed, sees a tall figure that she senses in a, is a woman, or at least female, dressed in a red coat, and the face is covered with some kind of a hood. She turns around to head home, not sure if it's a dream or reality. Gets home, goes out to the uh, goes to the window to see if this uh, hooded figure is there. It's not there anymore, but the entire street is engulfed in a red glow. She turns around to go into the living room, and this tall figure in red was standing there waiting for her. This time, she could clearly see it was female, meaning titties. And that her head was bigger than the rest of her body. And she had huge dark eyes that were more insect than human. Behind her, Susan is what Susan describes is a vortex, like a portal. This creature steps forward towards Susan, touches one of its claw hands to her head, and poof, she instantly felt like something electricity shoots into her body. And a moment later, silence. As she describes, it was as if the world stopped spinning and time froze. The figure steps back, disappears into this strange vortex portal thingy, and disappears, leaving Susan alone with this strange static crackling sound all over her. Fascinating, huh? Again, at what point does this fight or flight situation come? Like, yeah, she's always encountering these guys just standing there. Let's have a conversation. <laughs> and not once is she's like, no, fuck you. We're going to throw some fisty cups. <laughs> You're right. She never took a self-defense class. No, she, she should have, man. She just sits there just staring. She should have been tagging sack, dude. She should have been tagging sack, just kicking balls. I'm imagining at this point, this has obviously been happening for at least a year. At some point, you think she'd get fed up with it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, even if you're tormented by a ghost, uh, mm. some kind of paranormal something, at some point, you're going to get angry. Despite your fear, despite all that, you're going to get angry. And you're going to decide, as you said, the fight or flight. You're either going to decide to get the fuck out or you're going to you're gonna fight it. Whereas with her, she just stands there. Yeah. I mean, there's also, you know, a lot of people say there's fight, flight, or freeze. That some people can't do the fight or flight. That they some people just freeze. For that long, though? Yeah, I mean, dude, I the hard part is you never know how you're going to take something. You never exactly. know how you're going to handle something. Obviously, this is otherworldly. Yep. And it's it's this disconnect. Like it's so foreign. Like I've had this, dude. I've had things where I sat there and stood it, or, or I I stood there and and stared at something long enough before I even realized it was something that scared me. Because it it was just I couldn't comprehend it at the moment just took a moment to process yeah yeah and see, so that makes sense as well so i can see how in some cases something that's so beyond your imagination that you think well you don't think at all you just you just you just stare yeah you just stare and and so that's that freeze is literally your mind that action of flight or fu fight or flight has been frozen by your brain's inability to comprehend the situation. And so that's why I wonder if maybe that's what's happened. But as you said, a very prolonged amount of time, I'd be at least pissed. I'd be once, like, fuck at least you. One time. Yeah, I'm done with this. As you said, like, I, I'm going to punch my grandma, see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Watch the dentures fly. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> My Invisalign's. 
Oh, shit. So one of the last accounts that Susan gave, uh, as I said, was the worst. Uh, So prepare yourself. She claims that she was driving to visit her parents one night at around 8 p.m. when she sees a fox, like one of the ones from her dream, appears in front of her. She watches the fox for several seconds, not knowing if, you know, again, and kind of in that inability to understand if it's reality or dream. Uh, before noticing that familiar red glow starting to overtake the surroundings. The next thing she knows, everything goes black. Suddenly, she's walking out of some woods and into a field. When she looks up, the entire sky is red. She stumbles forward for several moments before she realizes that the fox is a little ways away from her. As soon as she looks at it, it turns and it runs. And she felt like it was wanting her to follow it into an area of tall grass. Here's what I'm going to ask you. If you've had, we, we just talked about this fight or flight. If you've had moments where you have these dreams that appear to be leading you into terrible situations, at what point are you going to say, I am not going to do this again. <laughs> I am not going to follow this fox. I am not going to follow a red hooded person. I'm not going to do any of this. I'm going to, I'm going to stand here and I'm going to tell myself to wake up or I'm going to sit down or I'm going to lay down. I'm not doing shit. And let's face it. How many situations in any horror movie or anything that you can think of that bad shit happens in tall grass and cornfields, <laughs> dude, for you real do not go into the cornfield. You do not go into the tall grass. Absolutely. <laughs> you do not do that. Don't follow a strange animal that seems to be guiding you into, into areas. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. Don't. Nope. It's an agent of the devil. When she did go into this area, which she did, she went ahead and followed the fox. God damn it. <laughs> she sees dozens of women of various ages, sizes, shapes, all making their way in the same direction. Susan suddenly feels a trembling sensation in the ground getting stronger. And then the women, all the women, lift off the ground with a whoosh sound, spiraling and twisting around. Susan, nope. what, what? Hell no. Hell no. Susan sees an intense red light, feels an excruciating pain, and everything goes black again. When she wakes up, she's standing in a long line of women in a dark room, all naked, tightly packed together, almost touching. She looked ahead, saw a red glowing orb with what looked like wings on each side, spraying the women with some unknown misty substance. An ejaculating angel? Hmm? Probably not. God damn it, Susan. Stay out of the tall grass. Stay again, yes. <laughs> it leads to ejaculating angels. God damn it. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> When this substance hits Susan, it has a calming effect, as all jism does. <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, when the women, so, uh, so during this, they're all trudging along. So the women start, some of them are falling and attempting to climb out of the line. The winged red lights would extend a tube-like device up to these women's head, and that's what would carry them away. So whether it's suction or a grabby thing, who knows, man. But she said it was as though they were being herded into areas based on their type, their body type, their age, their health, all these things. And after a while, they entered a tunnel of sorts, and she could hear cries of pain and desperation ahead. So when they come out into a larger room... It had walls made of cubes of meat. Jesus. Cubes 
of meat. Now, here's why I started thinking slaughterhouse Mm -hmm. is... A lot of times, don't they have like hanging meat in yeah. areas where they're transporting animals to and from? Oh, yeah. So, again, not that I'm saying that this is a whole like, you know, movement against, you know, against factory farming, which again, I'm totally anti factory farming. It's deplorable. It really is. But again, I, you know, I look at a lot of things like propaganda. This could be something where somebody comes up with a story to bring the reality of factory farming to a human by putting humans in the place of cattle. Yeah. Because it is extremely similar. Extremely. Which, look... Here's what I'm going to say. As horrible as all this sounds, this is identical to what happens in a factory farm. So if this does disturb you the way it does me, factory farms. Things are about to get a little graphic. Oh, yeah, they are. Oh, yeah. And But this is, this is, what, this is a lot of times what happens in factory farming. So, you know, you talk about this, which I'm not anti-meat. I'm a very much so a meat eater. But I'm also, I don't buy from factory farms. You know, I specifically source locally locally done meat. You know, things like that. I'm even trying to find eggs. The whole thing, man. I mean, you know, so I'm not anti-meat. I'm anti-homicide. <laughs> you know, I'm anti-horrific living conditions, things like that. Anyways, I just had to get that out there. Um, so, um, before she could see anything else, before she could study her surroundings anymore, determine what the cubes of meat were made of or anything like that, the women are sprayed again and various samples are taken from them. She sees a conveyor belt of restrained women are being artificially inseminated by what seemed to be, as she describes, the lower half of a man that was kept alive by a network of wires and pumps. Like some kind of unfinished cyborg is what she describes it as. Dude. Damn. What in the actual fuck? Now that does not happen in factory farming. That, that definitely doesn't happen. At least I'm pretty sure. But that's, I was like, what the fuck? That's crazy. So they're moved off, and another group takes their place. So they're just, just, this, just this assembly line of getting ladies pregnant through cyborg sperm. So then she also sees a group of pregnant women giving birth alone, no assistance, both of them, the, the baby and the woman, are consumed by one of these jellyfish-like aliens as soon as the baby is born. Crazy. What do you mean? I wonder what they mean by consumed, like. Well. Eaten, digested, like. I mean, it looked as, I mean, the way I took it is, like, similar to what was going on with the ant, right? In the bedroom was the... The, the jellyfish creature is like over the lady, basically like inserting itself into her, consuming her. Mm -hmm. Or in a way of like, imagine like it going, like a blob side just going over them both and consuming them. I'm not sure. Wow. I'm not sure. Crazy. Either way, it's That's fucked crazy. up. That is fucked up. The worst part, she said. The worst part. Worse than all this, she said was a different room where women, all screaming, are literally torn apart with these tubes going into them, wires going into them all over, and they're just tearing them apart. Jesus. When she looked around, or I'm sorry, then all of a sudden, she wakes up in a field. 
not torn apart, obviously. What, she didn't get any of the tourist attractions? Apparently not. Like Apparently it was just a, tour. a guided tour of atrocities. Okay. That's the, other, that's the other thing that makes me skeptical of all this. How come none of this happened to her? You know, she wasn't, she didn't have tentacles up her nose. She, she didn't, her cat didn't get face raped. You know, her dog didn't disappear. She didn't get artificially inseminated by cyborg penis. So, so she's just, they just taking her along so she can see all this and then tell other people. Right. That was what that my biggest thing. I'm, I'm reading all this. I'm going through all this, and it, it dawns on me. As you just said, none of this happened to her. How is she just, how is she not giving birth and being consumed? How is she not? But she's she is the one. The one. She's the one. Right? What a Matrix-like ending. Mm-hmm. So that's the other reason why I'm like, uh, propaganda. It's very easy to come up with a story where there's someone seeing all this, but then how do you explain how they made it out? You see what I'm saying? Like, why, exactly. why, why is Susan not where all these other women clearly are? Anyways, that's never explained. Here's what happened. She wakes up in a field. She looks around. She can see headlights from her own car on the road. Short ways away. So now she, all of a sudden she's back at her car. Gets in her vehicle. Finds her clothes in a pile by the car door. And it's 8.03 p.m. Meaning three minutes had passed. Because if you remember, she was driving. It was 8 p.m. Yeah. To her, it felt like hours. Now again, missing time is a really common theme in alien abductions. And I'm reluctant. It's relevant. It's relevant, but it makes me wonder when people try and piece together explanations of what they're trying to, this horrific message she's trying to get across of factory farming. Well, now she's going to tie it back into alien abductions because it's so far beyond what most normal alien abductions talk about. She's got to bring it back to have a common theme with another alien abduction, which is missing time. In this case, though, it's the opposite. Most of the time, it's 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 they've been somewhere where they thought only a few moments passed, but they've been gone for hours. In this case, she claims to have experienced all this in a matter of three minutes. So I'm leery of this one. I mean, I think it's yeah. horrific. Again, as I said in the beginning, yeah. if there's truth to this, it's a it's a terrifying prospect to think that really one is. you could be abducted at any any moment that's the idea that any one thousands of us go missing all the time thousands that yes the possibility there's a lot of things out there that say well we have the missing 411 we definitely do have women that go missing we have all these things that happen we definitely do have a lot of themes of human harvesting of aliens and stuff like that but is it is this legitimate you know again why her why is she able to go out and tell people that this is what happened whereas all and these I other women say, yeah all the i mean literally she didn't get one tentacle up her ass not one she may not be the most attractive <laughs> oh, yeah she's not even worth the oh, tentacle I, oh dude Oh, she's just, she's just too ugly of a bitch for the aliens. Like even they water. went to abduct her and then realized when they got her up to the shit, this, oh, you know, let's just show her around and send her back. Susan, Our bad. Susan, you so lucky, you ugly, because bitch, <laughs> you'd be tore apart if you weren't. You'd be tore apart. We'll take your cat. <laughs> oh fuck we are total dicks yeah <laughs> there's a special place below for each of us oh hilarious <laughs> though that is so awesome <laughs> oh shit that was the last account she gave man 
you know that it's like you said like if there is an element of truth to this and there are plenty of people that go missing daily there's an element of truth to this that is just terrifying horrific yeah Yeah. and it's but at the same time again why did she just get the guy to tour like why is it happening to everyone but her everyone but her everyone but her that's the key point it's not you know i it's one thing if she woke up in a field with 12 other women that had experienced the same thing and weren't raped but she wasn't she woke up by herself every single time everyone else around her experienced this so either she's straight up cursed this bitch yeah. is poison or she is making it up. <laughs> you know? I mean, look, I I want to believe. This is my whole theme for my show. I want to believe. I definitely don't want to believe this. But not saying that I don't want to believe this in the way that I just want to discredit this woman. I really think... There's something to be said here for her own personal beliefs on earthly things. Mm. How much you want to bet she was a vegetarian. And maybe was really upset at Tyson Chicken. And was like, you know what? I'm going to teach him a fucking lesson. And I'm going to, you know, because look, here's, here's the truth. Nobody can disprove this. Nobody can disprove this experience. We can talk about all day long about how it may or may not have happened. There's no way that we can ever truly know. Because look, let, let's say, you know, that I, I want to believe that there is forces in the universe that are far beyond us that I think are absolutely capable of plucking a few humans out now and then. The question, though, is why would they want to do this? In this fashion. In this fashion. Now, again, why would we want to do that to cattle? Well, money. That's why companies do that. Money. Yeah, I don't. It's like going to a slaughterhouse and then taking a cow through a guided tour. And like, oh, this is your future. And then putting and it back just, out to pasture. Yeah, they put it out to pasture. Like, oh, go have some grass. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Why? What's the point? What's the point of releasing this woman back into the wild when she has seen how the fudge is made? Has any family come forward with anything on this? No. Dude, let me tell you this. There is no last name. It's Susan in quotation. So, look, I bring this story to light for two reasons. One, it's horrific, and I, I, I dig reading fantastic stories, and this one is just a, it's a gripper. But also because you have to discredit immediately when there's no, no one that will come forward to give their name. You know, like any other situation, if, if someone came up to you and said, hey, this and that and this, uh, but I don't want to tell you who I am. When I'm telling you all this, you'd be like, well, why not? You know, doesn't that, aren't you trying to avoid any fallout if it's not true? Susan is a very generic name. Mm-hmm. Who knows? That That's the honest truth. Who knows? That's why well, I, love, know, I love this I was, topic. You know, I was looking, and uh, there is a book on this called Harvest, the oh, true yeah. story of alien abduction. Yeah. And talking about this, I feel like I'm going to set out, see if I can't find this book. Hopefully it's on Audible. Maybe go check my library. I'm going to read this book and I'm going to come back at you with some more notes because I think there could be some more to this. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. I mean, we always do the, you know, we gloss over a lot of the stuff. Oh, yeah. There's so much information. Yeah. Yeah. The biggest thing Uh, that concerns uh, me is is the, the name, the fact that she's the sole survivor of all this having been taken through the entire process. Mm -hmm. They even sprayed her down with the goop. Why waste the goop? This had tickled my fancy well enough. I am going to read this book and uh, 
Right. Yeah. We'll see what more it has to say. By the way, selfless plug. Uh, there is. Uh, I'm affiliated with a group called Scribed. It's an app. It's an uh, Audible alternative. I had Audible for a while. I enjoyed it for a bit. My cons- my my thing that I didn't like about it was that I couldn't keep any of the books unless I had the one credit a month. So I was paying fourteen ninety five. I got the one credit a month, and I so that meant I could keep one book a month. With Scribed, you have access to their full library for fourteen ninety five. There are no credits. You, full library all the time, all the time. Podcasts, articles, books, audio books, you name it. Um, so you should check that out. Yeah, I'll definitely check it out. Check it out. It's good. Uh, you can also access for everybody listening. You can access that in the show notes. Check it out. I like scribed. Uh, again, I was a big, uh, I, I had audible for a long time, but the thing that always annoyed me is that if I, there was a book on there that had a credit, I had to, I had only could get the one. And like I said, with scribed for the same price, 1495, you get access to the entire library all the time. So I like that. Anyways, that's all I'm going to say. But um, it might just, in fact, I know it's on there. It's just not audible. Uh, like audio book, I mean. Yeah. It's a, a read book. A, you know, use your eyeballs. Use your eyeballs. <laughs> but uh, anyways, so yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a very, I this story is horrifying. Terrifying. Uh, it's it to, uh, again to think that this could even even partially be true and to to go through all that and and not not fight again i think that's another skeptical thing is this woman never once fought back never once uh, once never once i'm sorry but like i mean like i i don't even do haunted houses i don't like being that scared Oh, see, I but I have been house. through enough haunted houses in my youth that there has been an incident where I actually swung on one of the actors and it didn't <laughs> go that well for him. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I don't do haunted houses anymore because of that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, I mean, you get these alien abductions. You don't mean to tell me at some point being scared like that, you're just not going to have like a moment. It's just blank. You're just swinging. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, there are numerous reasons why I think this could be uh, not accurate because for the, for the reasons we pointed out soul survivor never fought back. Um, I, I just, and, and obviously the insanity of the situation itself, you know, half Man, you know, basically a, a robotic cock, uh, artificially inseminated women. I, it's just so much. It's so much. And I'm not saying that that couldn't happen. I hope it couldn't happen. Um, it just seems like a lot. And again, for it, none of it to happen to her, she's incredibly fortunate if that's the case. So, yeah, I don't know, man. Crazy stuff. Now, do I think that there is uh, a harvesting maneuver going on uh, from the homeless and the missing and all those things? I will say yes, but I will not put that on aliens that I've never met. There are plenty of government stooges I have met that I wouldn't put it past them. I wouldn't put it past them to harvest a human. Uh, In fact, Nancy Pelosi, go suck a bag of dicks. I wouldn't put it past her. Not one bit. I wouldn't put it past her to harvest a fucking two-year-old baby for its uh, fingernails. I don't know. She's a horrible, horrible human being. And so, and any of them, any of them, all you government fucking stooges. By the way, I'm your friendly terrorist here on the show. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really, it's amazing that people have to get, have to, Give credit to the aliens when we have evil here. You know what I mean? Almost definitely. We know for a fact that there are countries, China included, that harvest organs. Oh, yeah. We know that. It's not like we don't know the existence of the dark web and the black market. That's right. Part of why I go so hard in the you know, on Greer and whatnot, 
is because we have problems here on earth, a lot of them. And some of this stuff I feel like takes away from the problems we have here. We have human trafficking here. We don't need aliens doing it. We have human harvesting going on here on earth. We don't need aliens doing it. We have abductions. We have people that get kidnapped, tortured, abused right here by humans on other humans. We don't need to create a villain. We have those. Yeah, we already created one. That's right. (laughs) So sometimes I worry that when people make up stories like this, and I'm not saying this woman did, but sometimes I feel like when people make up stories like this, it damages the credibility for people who really do have bad shit that's going on. That really do... Yeah, I feel like this would have more credibility, like maybe she's missing a limb or maybe they harvested out her uterus or whatever the fuck they're doing to these people because apparently they're all women. So it's got to be something about the female productive mm-hmm. genetics, something. And so I would, if she had come out of this missing something or something that couldn't be explained medically, that would make sense to me. Maybe give us a last name too, you know. Give us, uh, give us uh, something that lends credibility. Something that lends credibility, because otherwise, to me, it's just fear porn. It's just fear. It makes pe- It's gonna. It's gonna make people afraid. Let's say that a true advanced alien civilization, enlightened as fuck, comes to Earth, ready to help humanity, what do you think the majority of people are going to think is their intentions? Based on the media that we have, based on the stories that we have of aliens coming to Earth, do you think people are going to be receptive or terrified? I'd say as a mass, it would be... uh... I don't know. I think it would be in the manner of how they how they come down for first contact, honestly. I mean, if they come down swarming, aggressive, blowing shit up, I think it's going to be pretty scary. <laughs> well, I definitely, I think, I think if they're enlightened, <laughs> wanting to help humanity, they're not going to swarm in. Yeah, yeah. You know, if, if, they're they're, wanting to, if they're wanting to help humanity, they're, they're enlightened. They're, they're going to send a couple of adv- uh, emissaries down to talk mm-hmm. to whatever, whoever. And in that case, I would feel like, at, especially this day and age, it would be more receptive just on the base that we are in this age of, of uh, knowing and understanding. We're asking more questions with the internet out there. We have so much more information just at our fingertips that it really is creating a new generation. And... I think we would receive it well, honestly. I would hope so. I just worry that people that spout out shit like this yeah, are going to raise a false alarm, including government. I, I feel the first strike against it would come from religious figures, honestly. Religion and government, man, they go hand in hand. Yeah. Hand in hand. So, you know, you, you have, uh, you know, well, I won't go into my super personal feelings on religion, but We're going deep, but, uh, but yeah, no, I, I absolutely feel like what you're going to have is <clears throat> you're going to have authorities, whether it be religious government or otherwise trying to direct how people think about it, you know, as they do now with everything. You know, they try and dictate what how humanity feels about something. Oh, it's it's already worked so well. Mm-hmm. So that's what I worry about. I worry about if we ever do get that moment where mm-hmm. we really do have some enlightened beings come down to actually get in contact with us. That you we, know what, fuck. We I don't have, care how the world receives it. I will volunteer. 
There you go. I will take one for the team, guys. There you go. Beam me up. Let's roll. <laughs> beam me up. As they say, <laughs> beam me up, Scotty. Scotty, beam me up. Um, with that, as always, as I do every episode, I want to ask you, my people, what do you think? You think the story's legit? Do you think Susan is full of shit? Uh, do you think that uh, you could keep half a man alive and stiff using only wires and tubes? Well, Depends on where you put the tubes. Ah, oh. ah. Little Richard Gere joke there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well... I would love to hear from you all. I would love to hear what uh, what you have to say about all this. If you have stories, experiences, like Matthew Morfitt did, wrote us some great stories, or Josh. Oh, my God, I'm getting people mixed up. Josh wrote us some stories. Thank you very much, sir. Um, we'll read them on the show if you would like. So tell us. Tell us your stories. Tell us your experiences. If you want to reach out, you can email Link is in the show notes. Follow that link to all things UFO No in the show notes to go get yourself some merch. Reach out and hit us up. Go follow us on YouTube. Go follow us on Rumbles. Um, everywhere you find your favorite podcast, that's where we are. But for now, I got to thank some people to the Tin Foil Militia. I'm filling them in. We're building the ranks, and I want you. So donate now. Patreon.com slash UFO No Podcast. Casey Armadillo. Thank you, sir. Michael Ralston. Thank you. Rihanna Little joins us almost every single time on the Discord. Thank you so much. Appreciate all your support. Uh, the OG supporter desire tinfoil hat wearing Aaron Rice. Thank you. Jesse. Thank you so much. Always have some wonderful conversations. New to the tinfoil militia jet life teague i believe that's josh but i'm not sure uh michael benavides thank you sir michael carlton or carlton carlton turner thank you uh he was on the discord a little while back had some great conversations matthew morfitt as i mentioned earlier thanks for giving us some topics thanks for giving us some uh, good ideas to get some show notes on it was phenomenal and there's a shirt from his inspiration uh, that I say at the end of the show, go check it out on the uh, the merch shop. But you too can be a part of the Tinfoil Militia. All you got to do, go donate, patreon.com slash UFO podcast. You're going to get new episode every single week just for the members. Bonus content coming soon. Um, all my loyalty, everything ad-free, super awesome. Love you guys so much. And now for my general shout-outs, I want to thank Black Coast, killer band and the wet wire brand for shout me out thank you guys so much over there in the uk if you guys like heavy metal you're gonna dig these guys go check them out black coast uh casey leesky my good friend uh always supporting me works with me at the cbd shop which by the way you can also find in the show notes if you'd like cbd you're got stiff joints and all that go check it out um Matthew Morfitt, as I said, thanks for the uh, topics, dude. Ridiculous Patronus 1, your scented memory. GG Holland, the Slime King plays. Thank you all for your reviews. It means a lot. Reviews help us grow the show, so I appreciate you. Uh, my sister Christy, the whole family, uh, Jesse, Zoe, Emma, thank you all for listening. And, of course, like I said, Josh, who wrote our stories from Camp Verde, Arizona, Thank you, sir. And I want to ask you, does after hearing this story, do you still want to be abducted? Mm, makes you wonder. Uh, also want to give a shout out to Andy Peoples, who reached out to Nate and everybody who's reached out to Nate. Bots, mind your business. Everybody else, hit up Nate on uh, Facebook. I'll put a link in the show notes. Also, be sure to get yourself some of that sweet merch. Uh, link in the show notes. Everything is in the show notes. Go check it out. Everyone who's bought merch, I love you. Thank you. Tag me, UFO No Podcast, in your post. And, uh, whoa, I want to share you. I want to broadcast you. I want to show you off because you got my shit on your shit. Uh, so thank you so much. And uh, that's it, guys. If you want to get a shout out, let me know you listen to the show or donate. It's that simple. And remember, share, 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 share. Sharing is caring. Love you all. Nate. Thanks for being on the show, bro. Is he still there?
Is he still there? Anyways, uh, we want to thank Nate for being on the show. Love him. Go follow him on uh, Boldly Gone Facebook page. Uh, I will put a link in the show notes, and you can follow him. Again, if you like the show, then be sure to share. But as I always say, keep your eyes to the skies and watch out. Oh, stay elevated, of course. And watch out for the government. They're shoisty bastards. Oh, <laughs>